Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to uh, set up a timer for your game. So like as the game starts, uh, you can have it say like 3, 2, 1, go, um, and just have a kind of little introduction. Uh, that might be a cool little feature. I got a couple requests to do something like this. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our, um, our Player 1 main. I'm going to hit uh, save here. Sorry about that. And in our player one main match uh, or map, we're just going to go in, and what we're going to do basically is we're going to have some big text right here that counts down: three, two, one, go. And then the ball starts moving. So in those first three seconds, nothing will happen. You'll be able to move the paddle, but since the ball is not moving, it's essentially like you know pre-game. And then it says go, ball starts moving, and the game begins. So the first thing we do, we need to make a copy of one of these other text messages right here that we can work with. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one on the left here, and I'm just going to hold down Alt my keyboard and then drag off from it, and create another one in the middle there. Then I'm going to drag it down a little to the center, and then I'm going to hit, uh, I think that's, yeah, R on my keyboard, to, and then scale it up a bit. We'll get that right about there. So we've got a new text mesh here. Let's go ahead and rename this over here. It's going to click on the name and hit F2, and this is going to be, uh, let's say, Countdown, and then we'll go TR for a text render. And then for the text, we'll set this to start at 3. So this will always see start at 3. So if I hit play, you can see it could say 3, 2, 1, go. Looks good. So we got that set up. A couple other things you need to set up on here. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And we're going to set up a tag for it like we set up for these guys. So this is going to be countdown tag. Right there. Looks good to me. All right, so we've got that set to go, and uh, looks like we've got the text render little object all set up. Now we're going to work on the actual functionality to make this work. It's not too bad, and all of it's going to be done inside uh, the controller or the ball. So if we go to our blueprints, we go down to our, uh, I think it's the regular ball, BP ball. Double click on that, and we have our blueprint here um, from the previous you know, the tutorial that we've been working on. So what you want to do is mainly we're just going to have some controls set up right here uh, on event begin play that are going to set up the majority of what we want to do for the rest of the game, um, mainly countdown. But we also want to have the the text update in real time. So you know it's going to it's going to make changes and delays, but then it's going to update down here in the event tick to actually make those uh, changes visible to the player very easily. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to follow the same order as we did down here. So when we would uh, we would have a uh, you know a point was made on one side or the other, we'd take the score and we'd pass it into um, one of those text renders on either side here. We're going to do the same thing with our uh, countdown timer. So basically, what's going down down here. This is all you need to worry about from here on. Is we look for the an actor of class, which is a text render actor. We like loop through all the ones there are. We cast it to a text render actor. That way we can get uh, stuff that's inside it. We check for the if it has a tag. In this case, it'll be a countdown tag. And then we'll see if it has that tag. If it does have that tag, then we set the text. And that'll be it. And from here on, we don't actually need this stuff. So the way we're going to do this is just go ahead and go in your blueprint here. You can see where it is. I'm on the uh, BP left goal. Go down to where it says Get Actors of All Class. And we're going to copy everything out of here up to the set text. So I'm just going to drag a box, hit Control-C on my keyboard. And then go all the way up to the top here. And we're just going to take these guys and drag them down a little bit, drag this up a bit, and just click right here and hit Control-V. So now we've got this. Basically what you do is disconnect this wire by holding Alt and then left-clicking and plug that in to get actors of all class. So this is pretty much the essence of how we're going to get at that, that centerpiece. we got the event begin play. We look for the text render actor, a for loop. Loops are all the ones there are. Cast to a text render actor. Here's where we enter in our own tag. So it's countdown tag, camel case, uh, right there. And then once we see and we say, okay, that's the right actor. It's the one in the middle, this guy that we want. We know that it is. Go, what we want to do is instead of actually driving the text directly from here, since this is event begin play, it'll just, you know, it'll just do this once. We want to have it so the text updates uh, regularly. So it's three, two, one, go. So what we're going to do is instead make a variable that this drives. So we're going to delete this stuff on the end. We're going to come over to variables, click on here, and we're going to make a new variable. We'll call this uh, countdown text render. And this is just going to store uh, a reference to the actual text render uh, object here that we're getting 
uh, in this blueprint right here. So I'm going to click on this guy and go up to variable type. And sometimes it doesn't show up, but it'll see if it comes up. Text, render, actor. That's the one you want. Sometimes it doesn't come up. You want that, the little blue thing. And then you can just drag it out of here and go to set. Plug this right into here. And you're going to be plugging in the text render actor that's coming out of the cast node here. And so right now what we have is every time when the match begins, it looks for this object, it gets it, and then it stores it in a variable that we can access anywhere else in our, in our blueprint graph. So now that we've got that, it's pretty easy to make it so we can actually uh, just set up a delay uh, that will run through those, uh, will actually run through the different uh, messages that come up, you know, 3, 2, 1. So we'll pull off of this, and at the end of this guy right there, we're going to make it, I'm going to do that again, we're going to make a delay. So we're going to go right here, I'm going to type delay. So what are we going to do? We got, we got the actor in, now we're just going to delay for one second because we want it to say three, then two, then one with a second delay. And we're going to set, uh, we're going to create a variable that's actually going to drive uh, the actual text function from this, uh, fr from this storage, this variable we have here. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable and that's going to be called uh, countdown. We'll call it countdown int, like for instance it's going to be an integer. And we'll set that to be an integer. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, this is going to be just uh, a string because at the end we don't want it to say 3210, we want to say 321 go. That's uh, what I thought uh, I had requested that that might be a good, good way to structure it. So I'll make this a string and that looks good. And then we've got a little string that we can write anything into. You know, we can write text into or we can write numbers, which is what we want, which is going to be what's going to be sent to this. So we got our delay of one second. We want to take our countdown uh, variable and we'll set this to two. So after the game starts, one second later, it'll set the countdown variable, if I can spell that right, to two. And then we're going to repeat this a couple times. So sets it to two. And I bet you can't guess it's going to come next. It sets it to one. And then one more time. In this case, it's going to say go. That's why we had to use a string. Now, otherwise we couldn't just type that out. So now we've got that and it's going to say go and then we don't want the game to start immediately. We want it to kind of say go for a second, right? So we want another delay on here. So it says go for one second. Then the match actually will begin. But maybe we want to have the go to stay up for a couple more seconds. So after the game actually starts. So the way we'll do that is we'll take our uh, physics linear velocity in this uh, which is going to set the actual uh, initial speed of the ball, you know, when, when that actually this node gets get, gets to it gets to this node. It'll send this ball flying off in one direction or the other. Oh no! It'll send it to the right. So this will happen after we have all the delays up there to do the three, two, one countdown. So that drives this. The ball starts moving, and then about let's say we'll put another delay in, and we'll make this after a half second. We get rid of that text actor. We just don't want that anymore. So we'll go ahead and drag off of here and do destroy. I'll do destroy actor and we'll take our countdown text render and put it right there. Looks good. So this is all we need inside the event begin play. Once again, we're just basically getting access to the text render actor in the center. You know, we got to get the class, we loop through it, and then we store it as a variable. And it'll make sense why we store it as a variable in a minute. We get it as a variable, then we have a delay for one second, sets the countdown to two, then another delay to one, it says go. Uh, we wait another second, then we uh, launch the ball, and then we wait another half second, and then it turns off that main, uh, that little uh, display in the middle. We've got all this. It looks good, right? So what would happen if we hit compile and save and hit play? Maybe not. Maybe you can see what would happen. So I'll hit play, and does anything happen? Oh, the timing seemed right, but there was no actual countdown, right? Uh, you just saw three, or three seconds go by or four seconds go by and then the ball moved. What's happening is it's updating the internal variable, but it's not actually displaying it to the actual, it's updating the countdown string variable, but it's not actually displaying it to the text render. So that's what we need to do now. That's going to happen inside the event tick, and that's going to be, you know, set every time this gets set. So we'll drag event tick over to the left a bit, and as we drag that off, we're going to just need, I guess, uh, it'll be like three nodes. We'll pull off of the event tick, I'm sorry, we're going to need a countdown text render variable that we created up there. 
pull off of that, and then go ahead and just type out set text. So this is the very, this is the node that will allow you to set text, just like we did down at the bottom here when we were updating the score. Right here, okay, looks good. So I'll drive that to set the text, and I'll push this into the branch. And you see, what's it setting to? It's setting to nothing right now. We want to set it to our actual variable, so which is countdown. So I plugged that right in there, dragged it right off, and plugged into the node. And now what happens is uh, this is constantly checking for the value of countdown, which gets updated every second to be the correct value. And if all's gone right, it should uh, should actually look right if we check out the game. So go ahead and hit play. Oop. Looks like it deleted itself just there for a second. Let's see. So we hit play. Nothing comes up on the first run. I see why. Okay. We forgot to set a default value. Do you see that? We hit play and it says 2, 1. We want to see 3, 2, 1. Reason it's doing that, we go to the countdown variable. We didn't put anything in. Because the first time before it does anything, it just displays 3 which is exactly what we want. Because this is constantly forcing it. Although we put a 3 in here, this will overwrite it immediately. So now that we've got that set up, we'll hit save. Or we'll compile and save everything. I'll just hit save again, control S on my keyboard, and then hit play. 3, 2, 1, go. Boom. And the match has begun. And that's basically it. The one thing we need to fix, actually, is we don't actually want to destroy this node um, we'll just go ahead and make it so instead of destroying it, see that little error there, we'll set the text just to be nothing. So now we do that and actually use that little glitch we had earlier to our advantage. And we'll hit play. Three, two, one, go. Disappears. Great. So that's that it. That's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, I just wanted to make this little update. And hopefully this shows you how to set up a little timer for the beginning of your game. Uh, thanks a lot, and if you appreciate this video, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, support me with fan funding. Uh, any help uh, really, really means a lot to me. Uh, thanks a lot, and see you around.